but yeah, uh, go ahead. We can if it, this is short, we can share itself. Yeah. No, no, it's it's not uh, technical. I mean, just I want to discuss uh, some other point now. Okay, one then. to one with you. Okay, fine. So, yeah, we'll uh, do this after the call. Okay. If there is something Thank technical, you. it's better you share it with others because so that yeah, sure. the uh, advantage of yeah, yeah, that I will do. But uh, it's again a one-to-one -one discussion is needed. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So I do not remember yesterday how much we completed. We loaded this data from uh, to into all these tables, staging to a uh, landing to stage and all that. Let me just check that. We open this as well. So that's what we did, right? We loaded data into the base objects, and I just showed you also how you can delete data using SOAP. Uh, okay, now let's start with the concept of tokenization today. Because see, to and to move ahead, right? Uh, to move ahead, this is the first part that is done, and to move ahead, this is very complicated. Not complicated, it's a bit complex part. Okay, this one. So you must focus. You must try to understand this. Uh, uh, spend your try to understand it easily. Okay, clearly. So we'll go step one, one by one. Uh, these three steps will go. So we're starting the matching class from today onwards. That will continue for uh, two, three, or four sessions, depending upon how you are able to grasp it. Okay. So <clears throat> base object. Once data has been loaded into the base object. The consolidation indicator status will be four, okay, and the gradually it will change to three, then two, then one, okay. So we'll try to understand. First of all, we'll understand theoretically, okay. We'll understand theoretically how the status changes from four, then three, then two, then one, okay. How it changes, and once that is done, then we will see, like we'll run the job and we'll see how it changes, how it changes from four, three to one. We'll see that. Practically, okay. So now let's try to understand tokenization theory theoretically. See, tokenization. If you do not understand this properly, this will be very very complicated. Okay. If you understand this, then it will be easy. So let's try. Let's start with tokenization. See, tokenization is mandatory. Okay, and it happens prior to matching. That is before you do the actual mapping, uh, matching. The tokenization process occurs. Okay, so and what this tokenization does is, see, okay, let me put it in an example. Uh, let's say there is there are 10 million. Okay, let's say there are 10 million MDM records. Okay, let's assume that you have already loaded 10 million million MDM records, and let's say today you are loading 10 new rows, or you can say 10 rows can either be update or insert. 10 rows let's say you are today you are adding 10 rows okay and then what is how the getting some disturbance from Deepak maybe or from okay if you're not speaking please go on mute because if there is disturbance then that will distract me okay so uh, there are Sunil, yeah yeah funny Sunil, can I give a piece of advice yeah I know you, you are explaining very well all these things but mm -hmm. what can save you time is right. Uh -huh. so, like say you are taking multiple classes. For uh -huh. each part, like you can have an Excel sheet, right? Excel sheet tokenization, Excel T, Excel kind of hierarchy, and these kind of things. You can have quick notes there in the Excel sheet, and simply you can explain, right? So that way you can save more. Time yeah, yeah. Actually, I have yeah. the pro the problem. Is, that, okay. Yeah. No, no, that's correct. I have to do it because uh, actually, like I just came from an earlier class. So that's why I am unable to differentiate. Like in the morning, I have I have three hours class. Then here again, one hour class. So I that's a good advice. I'll use your advice to uh, plan it accordingly. Yeah, that way, like you know, you don't need to strain so much, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's correct. correct. So yeah, that's correct. We'll do that from the next time. Then see, uh, let's say you already have 10 million MDM records. Already have means all they have. They, all of them have consolidation indicator as one. Okay, so they are all master data. Now let's say you are getting 10 new records. Okay, then how will the process work? The process. This is how it works. 10 rows. Okay, 10 rows will be matched with, will be 
matched see i am trying to see explain you what are the possible ways of matching okay and then we'll see what are the drawbacks of, of those ways we'll discuss three ways how matching can be done and we'll see what is the drawback of all the three methods and then we'll see the best method to do that and that best method is used by informatica internally that's the internal algorithm so we'll try to understand what happens internally in the machine so see 10 rows will be matched with 10 million records it means how it will happen is the first row will be matched with 10 million the second row will be matched with 10 million okay and similarly all these 10 rows will be matched with 10 million because see this is how this is the blind way of identifying let's say like let's say you're getting one record Sunil from source then how would you know know that Sunil is already pre-existing in MDM the blind way of doing it check it at every record okay check every record and see if it's Sunil or not that's a Cartesian way so this is nothing but Cartesian so how many match pairs will be created or you can say how many time how many times that thing will happen that's called as a match pair okay so first understand what's a match pair match pair means if you're trying to match John with John Smith okay so how do you match two records how do you match two records that two match records are nothing but match pair for example there is uh, let's say this okay let's go to this example okay so if you want to match John and John Smith prepaid and postpaid database then you first of all you must create a match pair between John and John Smith that is called as match pair so the matching will happen among the match pair okay between these two records the matching will happen so that's why it's called as match pair so in informatica mdm you do not have any term called as match pair okay but that is a concept actually so when you want to match two records you first of all create a match pairs so you see in this case how many match pairs will be generated see this the first will generate 10 million match pairs then the second 10 million total is 10 cross 10 million million match pairs this many match pairs will be generated using this blind strategy the problem here is normally this source data will not be 10 it will be normally 10k something or 20k 30k so how many match pairs will be created you can imagine this will run for two days if you run run this job it means we cannot use this blind strategy that is randomly we cannot we, we cannot create match pairs we have to restrict the match pairs we have to restrict the match pairs only to limited set for example you have John you have John Smith and you have Amit Sharma okay then if you create a match pair among these two record it does make some sense but if you create a match pair among these two records it's literally meaningless because they are completely different customers so first of all our main strategy is to create match pair see the main strategy is two things there are two things in the matching one is the match pair create a match pair creation of match pair that's the first strategy of matching and the second strategy is actual matching okay the second strategy is the actual matching that is actually when, when you actually match the two customers so first is creation of match pair it means we you will create a match pair between John and John Smith okay then you will do the actual matching it means when you create a match pair then you do not do the actual matching there you just create the pair okay so here in here you do not you still do not know if the match pair will result in a match or no match you do not know have that information in the first step but when you go to the second step here you do the actual matching and then you can understand that if these two records in the match pair okay two records in the match pair are actually the same records or the different customer or did they match or did they not match so you can find out in the actual matching so that's about the this two step okay now let's move back 
see using this Cartesian strategy the limitation is the total number of match pairs the total number of match pairs is quite will get quite big so it means we cannot use this strategy here okay what we have to do is we have to restrict the match pairs and how do we do that what I do is let's say let's say this is the uh, this is what you are having from the source uh, sorry this is is let's say this is there in your base object let's assume okay and John he is in address uh, let's say this is his address and uh, let's say this is his address and let's say uh, this is Vegas something like that so let's say what we'll do is we will we will create a match strategy by saying that create match pairs if the records have same addresses okay so what we'll do is instead of creating a Cartesian strategy we will say create match pair among records if these records have same addresses so what is going to happen here is a match pair will be created among 1001 and 1002 okay let's say this is the these are the total records you have three records in your base object then only one match pair will be created if you use a Cartesian strategy what will happen how many match pairs will be created three match pairs will be created or you can say it's a it will depend upon but it will create a lot of match strategies match pairs okay but still here also we have a drawback this is the second point this is the second point and the drawback here is let's say uh, house number this and uh, in US or in Europe commonly you have like the same house number or you can say there is still an extension like uh, the house number is the same but you still have a b c three homes okay so let's say here the customer has given a but here the customer has for did forgot to mention the a so what you can see here is these two customers are same but they do not have exact address they have identical address so if we use this strategy what will happen is again we will be using we will be losing this match pair in this data so what we do is we create a third strategy and we say this create a match pair if the records have identical addresses now if, if you use this strategy what will happen is it will this a match pair will be created among the first and the second record okay and this is the exact strategy that Informatica internally uses and this may need not be addresses or it could be addresses or it could be name basically Informatica creates match pairs okay match pairs if they have identical name and addresses I hope you understood till this much okay so this is the strategy Informatica uses this strategy I just told you so that you can understand how step by step the process works but this strategy that I marked in like I've selected this will not be used by Informatica internally. Okay, this is the strategy that is used. Okay. Right, yes, yeah, Kalyan. Uh, so one yeah. quick question so, is. Yes. Yeah, go one by one. Yeah, Kal yeah Kalyan, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, so this match pair you said you doing name and address is that uh, configurable? So yeah, that's configurable. That's okay. configurable. I'll just quickly show you because you learned that in the matching class. But I'll show you quickly okay. so that you can easily correlate your question with the answer. Okay, so okay, it's not here. It's not configured for this. But let's say product if you go. Okay, for example, uh, you can see this. Uh, you can configure this as either address, match key, or fuzzy key. That's called as also fuzzy key. Okay, this. Uh, the, okay, I'll tell you later what is fuzzy key and all that. So you can see you can either select address or you can select person name or organization name. Okay, only but you can select only these three. You cannot select anything else. Okay. Yeah, Deepak, Thanks. go ahead. Sunil, I had the same question. I mean, wanted to know the same thing. Okay, the question, the answer is still the same. The answer, either you can configure yeah. address or name. When I'm saying name, there are two types of name: person name or organization name. 
I do not want to create confusion, so that's why I did not say person name, organization name. Okay, so let's try to understand this simply. Okay, so now let's go ahead. So create match pages if the records have identical addresses. Now, first of all, this is quite easy. The second point. Okay, so this is like it's very easy. But how does Informatica know if the addresses are identical? For example, how would Informatica identify if this is identical to this and this is not identical to this? How it does it internally? This does by using this strategy. The strategy is called as tokenization. The strategy to do that is called as tokenization. Now let's understand how this thing works. Okay, let's understand how this thing works. So let's say this address. Now what Informatica will do is it will take this address it will take this and based on this address see understand because if it is address then based on the address and if it is name then based on the name okay for simplification I'll refer to address now because that is the most widely used strategy so for this particular address it will create tokens what is a token a token is a 8 char alpha numeric value so it's an 8 car alpha numeric value. So how, how would it look Sorry. like? Yeah, yeah, funny. So, is the tokenization is an a complete uh, uh, record or just kind of the field? No, the, the tokenization the normally will be only on the new records with consolidation indicator as 4. Okay. Yes. That will that will be normally, but if you want to perform tokenization and matching on the whole table, you can also do that. No, not on the whole table, whole record. You mean to say, if they... Day, like, if a record has like 15 fields, no, the tokenization, see the tokenization will be based on the token key that is the fuzzy key. And the token key, if you have selected address, then the tokenization will be on address only. It will not have any impact if you change this and this, it will not have any impact, but it is completely on address. When if you select the tokenization on name, then it will be only on name, not on other columns. Okay, okay. suppose if you are doing a kind of a uh, matching it's kind of okay. yeah that's see I'll go step by step you're getting confused okay. the first thing is just differentiate these two things first is creation of a matchware we are talking about creation of the matchware then we will go to the actual matching see we are not doing any actual matching in the first step you understand right we are just creating match pairs we are creating okay. a match pair then we'll do the actual matching to understand and why do we create match pairs because if we do not do that, then we have to use this strategy. And this strategy will take one, one year to run. So we do not want to use this strategy. You understand, right? So first understand the first process. I'm talking about the first process now. Once that no, is no, done. I understand that part. Okay. But I was thinking only on the, my question was only on the tokenization. Is the tokenization only on few <coughs> fields or? No, not, or not few fields. It's either one. It's always one field, either address or name. And few fields means this will be taken as address. You have to provide this column name. You understand, right? Okay. You can select multiple column names also. But for example, name, this and all that. What Informatica will do is it will concatenate those fields. For example, if you go here, it will simply concatenate. Okay, I'll show you later. It will concatenate okay. those data and it will create a token on that. Okay. So this is how a token looks like. It's an 8 char alphanumeric value and it, it will be like this. Okay, it consists of numerics, uh, special characters, and then your alphabets in uh, caps. So what it will do is Sunil, uh, Sunil, one quick question before you move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, as you mentioned that tokenization can be done only on single col um, column or single field, right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, means. Uh, I don't know is it a valid scenario or not in the in my uh, base object uh, okay fine uh, the address is there but if the data is coming from the source uh, having a null value for the address mm -hmm. then how this tokenization will work this will not identify that's the thing so it, it will not work so that would not be identified yeah, that's correct that will not be identified so you have to choose carefully if you want to go with addresses or name so normally people will always go with addresses because this is a best strategy and if you are using addresses then you have to make addresses as mandatory okay you must make addresses as a mandatory field if you want to use the strategy that you, you are talking about 
Okay, so uh, in my base objects, suppose uh, John has an address, say now again address type can be multiple, right? Home address, office address. Correct, so correct. How then then again you have to decide, then again you have to decide which one to use for matching. Do you want to use billing for matching, shipping for matching, home address for matching, that you have to decide again. You understand, right? In okay. person can have, can have 10 different types of addresses. What you said is completely correct. Okay, but normally the he will have one address as the main address. Okay, and the uh, and the what you can say this process will be based on normally main address. But let's say if an architect decides that billing address and shipping address are also significant to determine the customer, then what he will do is he will use billing, shipping, and main address. All these three will be used together in the matching strategy. Okay. 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 Okay, now see for the first record based on this, let's say Informatica creates this token A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's say this it creates this token and see just remember Informatica will create n number of tokens. Normally it will create 7 tokens for every record. For every address it will create 7 different types of token, 7 different tokens. For example, this is one token then A, B, C, D, uh, 1, 2, 3, dollar then A, B, C, D or you can say A, X, Y, D, 9, 0 and in how Informatica does it, this is completely internal, okay, how Informatica does this, it, but what you can correlate is, it, it can, based on the string, it will pass this string to an algorithm and that will generate these types of tokens, okay, then dot 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 and if you see for token this, 1001, you can have A, V, T, X, six seven nine zero and you can have the second token a b c d one two three four okay and dot 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 and coming to the third one let's say u y k and you have many tokens so you just understand informatica creates minimum of seven tokens you can influence this okay by default it creates seven tokens but if you see here in this sheet okay you can easily understand you can you can you can influence the tokens number of tokens you can increase it to up to 28 okay from 7 14 then 27 28 you can do that I'll just show you that where is that uh, fuzzy starter G. yeah see this 60 page number I should remember this page okay see this this Initially, it's creating either seven depends upon the strategy. See, this is also uh, the runtime. Okay, for some example, Informatica decides to create seven tokens for one, and it may create eight tokens for another. That's completely internal. But normally, it will always create seven tokens. Okay, uh, then you can change that to fourteen. If you change the strategy to typical, it will create more. If you make it exhaustive, it will create even more. If you make it extreme, then it will it will create many many number of tokens. Okay. So what will happen here is, if there is any token that is common among two records, okay, if there is any token that is common among these two records, then that will be, then a match pair will be created. So here, sorry, this is 1002. So here a match pair will be created among 1001 and 1002. And if, let, let's say, there are seven tokens here and there are seven tokens here. So Normally what will happen is if the address are identical right at least one token will be common among the, those records It can also happen that there are multiple tokens that are common, but at least one token will be common across those records Okay, and let's say 1002 and 1003 Okay, so among these two records there are no common tokens Okay, it means this a match pair will not be created among 1002 and 1003 so are you able to understand what is the tokenization process and how Informatica does it? See, this address or the name based on which the match pair will be done is called as the fuzzy key. Just remember the name. This based on which the matching pair will be created that's called as the fuzzy key and the actual matching will be done based on fuzzy or and exact match columns. Come again, last sentence, yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Let me write it. 
see you have three types of keys fuzzy key and fuzzy match columns and exact match columns okay you have three things in total fuzzy key and fuzzy match column there is a fuzzy key and fuzzy match column are completely different okay I'll tell you why they are different because fuzzy keys will not be used for actual matching here the fuzzy key is addresses or the name in our case it's addresses so the fuzzy key will never be directly used for matching it will be only used for creation of the match pair once the match pair is created among 1001 and 1002 then the matching will be based on fuzzy match column or exact match column let me open this sheet where you can understand it for example in our matching sheet see the fuzz there is one fuzzy match key there is fuzzy match column and there is exact match column there are three types of things there is fuzzy match key see this is one this is one let me change the font so that you can easily differentiate or you can say I'll mark that as italics and okay so this is fuzzy match key that is the address name only used to create the match pair so do not get confused first of all you create a match pair in our case between 1001 and 1002 in 1001 and 1002 you create a match pair and once you create the match pair then what you do you say what you say is <coughs> if the name of the two records are identical then consider that as a match okay so if the name of the two records is identical then consider that as a match so this is called as the actual matching and the fuzzy key is the first step to create the tokenization to create the match pair you understand this clearly see like fuzzy key is nothing but the columns what you selected correct to be matched fuzzy right that's correct it's it's a column that you select that's correct but this will not be used in actual matching this is only yes. used to create a match pair match. and the actual matching will be on these columns that you that you configure yes. for example you see this match strategy it says there are four rules the first rule states that if the name of the two records are identical then auto merge them that is they are a match and the second rule states that if date of birth and gender are exactly same see this strategy they are not identical they are exactly same so this is an exact match strategy so if date of birth and gender are exactly same then the manual merge those records so it doesn't matter auto or manual it means they are a match they are a match this strategy but you can either auto merge some records and you can manual merge some records for example in the first case I'm sure that if the name are identical then they are the same customer but in the second case I I feel that they could be the same customers or they may not be the same customers okay so what I am I'll do is I'll get a third level review from someone let's say a data data Steve so that's why I'm doing a manual merge. so data Steve will check these records and will manually merge them okay so similarly in that case tokenization process will apply only for uh, fuzzy match based objects is that correct correct that is correct it is only used for fuzzy base object for example this property that I will go either today or tomorrow maybe okay this is only used if it is fuzzy if it is exact you do not have to do any go through all of this it's very simple exact means exact exact means I mean you do not have to do any fuzzy identical matching and all that you are using a fuzzy key and all this okay you simply directly match them that's the fuzzy strategy but normally you will not use exact match strategy much uh, the place where uh, you can say fuzzy is used is the main table that is the parent table you will use fuzzy for parents and for child table you will always go with exact matching will never configure fuzzy for child tables so in our example we will go with fuzzy matching for account and we will go with exact matching for addresses and contacts okay we'll do that we'll configure this okay now uh, Sunil yeah Deepak 
Yeah, I have a question on this rule. I mean, can we discuss right now or will you discuss it later? Yeah, ask me. Like, you can ask me. Okay. So, rule one, if the... Uh, I understand you mentioned about the fuzzy key and another fuzzy column and exact column. So, but when you say rule one, if the name of the two records are identical, here, what I understand identical means that would be similar, not exact same, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so if the name is identical, how can I do auto merge? I mean, see, this I mean, is in training class. Okay, I mean, the first thing is this: this will not be the exact situation in your project. What will what will happen is in your project there will be another condition, and ID is same. Okay, yeah, there will be There's, another condition. Okay, and ID is same, but. To simplify the issue, I've just mentioned that if the name of the two records are same, then ID is uh, and then auto merge. But in your live project, you will also add some other conditions. Okay. For example, and yeah. and what are the conditions that will vary from project to project? Okay. For example, to identify, first of all, how do you identify two customers are same? To answer this question, you have to sit with your data steward, business analyst, and your business team, and they will give you inputs that yes, if these these attributes are identical and these these are same, then you can easily say that this is the same customer. Based on that, you will actually okay. create this rule. Okay. Okay. Based now on uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah. No no. Now it makes sense to me. I mean, I understand it's the training classes, so that's you yeah, are using you can, very simple. See, you rule. can use this. Using this uh, second match rule set, you see, if the name and addresses of the two records are identical, then auto merge them. So it will vary. Okay, it will not always be same. And you can see the strategy. If the address, name, and date of birth are matching, it will be auto merge. So for training purpose, I made this simplified. But normally in a project, what you will have is if the name of two records are identical and some other ID information like date of birth, okay, some other ID like date of birth is same. Normally you will not have single conditions because this is not practical, okay? Like if the name is identical, it does not mean that they'll go for match. I mean, this would be the okay. same customer. Yeah, and uh, one more thing. Are you going to cover in some, uh, later that what is the difference between fuzzy match column and exact match column? Fuzzy, um, because I'm not... Fuzzy match yeah. column and exact match column. Okay, that's quite simple, yeah. right? Fuzzy exact match column means, let's say date of birth. Okay, 2nd June 2015, let's say. Okay, so exact mm -hmm. match column means that will be, you cannot, see fuzzy is identical, fuzzy, fuzzy is also called as identical matching. Similar matching. Similar matching, or no, yeah, you can say identical, uh, you can say similar, identical, yeah, similar you can also say, whereas exact is called as, exact is, exact means one is equal to one, that is one is equal to one yeah. that is called as exact but here Correct. one 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 and one and one 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 this could also match this is called as identical yeah okay, okay. identical means not exact exact means see first of all exact means you all guys already know when you say when you write a query right select a stick from emp where where emp id is equal to one one so exact means equal to when you use equal to but in identical, yeah. you cannot use equal to because they will not they will like, never match. Like, 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 right? Means like and yeah, uh, not exactly person. like. Also, it's a bit complicated form of like where, uh, depending upon algorithm and all that, they'll be different. For example, Sunil and Sunil K, these are two records. So how, this you need to fuzzy you configure fuzzy matching to identify. If you use exact matching, it will always be a no match. Correct. Yeah, thanks. Okay, now moving ahead. So that completes the tokenization part. Okay, that completes the tokenization part and I think you understood this. Okay, let me tell you more about this Excel sheet. The fuzzy match key is the address, the fuzzy match column is the name and exact match columns. These are all the exact match columns and these are the four rules that will uh, that will be created if the first rule is satisfied that is this rule is satisfied then the record will go for auto merge if this if the first rule is not satisfied then only it will execute a second rule okay just remember this will be like one by one so if let's say 
second rule is also not satisfied then it will go to the third and then dot dot okay so if any rule is satisfied then it will stop there and it will tag the record as either depending upon that flag for example for the first rule is satisfied it will be auto merge the the set will be if the second is satisfied then it will go for manual merge okay so it's quite simple now let's move on to so, yeah funny so then you, you can specify the manual merge or auto merge uh -huh. at the record level or at the table level that's on the rule level rule level for example on this rule you can specify auto merge for this rule you can specify manual merge so when every match pair is executed when every match pair is executed they will go through these rules one by one if this this is satisfied it will never go through these rules this is called rule and you create all the rules inside a match rule set match rule set is nothing but a grouping of match rules you have okay when we go to yeah, the yeah. tools you can easily understand that so let's move to the tools so let's try to configure okay for <clears throat> so this is this will be our main focus for next few days okay we'll try to configure all of these tabs one by one first we'll go step by step we'll understand all these options because some options are very important and then we'll go to this option and we'll understand this and then finally we'll create the match columns I'll remove this and then we'll create the match rule set and all this primary key match rules and all that will go through all of this one by one okay so <coughs> so first thing is the things that I told you all this everything that all needs to be configured in this match merge setup so in this match merge setup all the matching and merging configuration needs to be set up okay so by default this will be zero 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 and all this okay now to configure it just acquire the log first of all and see match columns match rule sets match rules in active set and primary key match rules I'm not going to talk about these four now because these four will be covered in their respective tabs that is when I go to match columns and this will be covered when I go to rule sets this will be covered and similarly okay this will be covered in other like primary key match rules will be covered here so we'll start from <coughs> this maximum matches for manual consolidation that's the first parameter okay what is this parameter for example if you go here then you see that if rule number two is satisfied then it will go for manual merge okay let's say okay opening many notepads okay let's say you are getting 10k records from source today let's say today you are getting 10k new records from source and what has happened is out of 10k uh, 3k records are auto merge tagged for auto merge or you can say auto merged <coughs> uh, 4k 4k records are manual merge and remaining 3k records are new records that is they were previously not there so there is no question of any match here so let's say this is what you are expecting okay so this is 4k but if you configure this as 1k this is 1000 means 1k then your job will stop once this number reaches 1k then your job will stop there so this is the parameter which will influence how many maximum rows can be queued for manual merge okay so if I make this as 5k let's say 5000 then here your job will succeed but if I make this as 2k or anything less than 4k if this is 2k and you are expecting 4k to be manual merge then what will happen once it reaches 2k once the manual merge reaches 2k this process will stop there it will not move ahead so normally you always keep this parameter as bit high not very high but bit high if you keep it very less then what will happen is here is the job might stop okay in production so you do not want to do that if you want to make it very high what will happen is it will put a put lot of load on your data steward 
so decide this parameter normally you keep it as thousand I mean ten thousand that is enough but if you want to keep it more then you can keep it that's the first parameter then the second one is number of rows per match job batch cycle what this means is this is like similar to your your commit interval that you have in the power center so let's say you're getting 10k records 10k records let's say needs to be matched okay with your uh, MDM so if this parameter is let's say thousand that is 1k that means at max it can process thousand records at a single moment of time so what will happen in our case our job matching job has to run for 10 times okay our matching job will have to run for 10 times remember this will happen internally you cannot see how many times X actually it runs but this is what happens internally if you make this as 100 then your matching job will run for 100 times to process 10,000 records so how this parameter will impact the performance see if you keep it as very high number what will happen is the performance will be very very good but your job might fail if you do not have that processing capacity your job might fail because of out of memory error but if you are it is very less let's say then your job is never going to fail but this will take very long time so this is also an interview question what is the best value of this parameter the best value of this parameter is 10 percentage of the source volume 10 percentage of the source volume that means let's say today you are getting 12 record 12 K tomorrow you are getting 13 K it doesn't means that and let's say day after tomorrow you are getting 20 K it doesn't means that you will key you will make this parameter as one like 1200 for here 1300 for here and 2000 for here what you do is you calculate the average of this and you decide that yes we are on an average we are getting 18 K records per day so you make this parameter as 1800 that's how you do it okay so that's about the so then like uh, you said like job will run for 10 times right? uh -huh. okay like uh, in 10 cycles okay. it's not exactly 10 times it's in 10 cycles that will happen internally you do not have exposure to that so can we check in the like job control or job metrics table that job how many times but you can check that but it will be quite difficult the problem will be lot of temporary tables will be created using like TMP dollar something and it will be written there so if you want to do track it you can also track it okay so temporary tables will be created and that will only be there during the time of running once the run is there then the temp run is done temporary tables will be dropped yeah, why I'm asking this question is like uh, I was just checking some of the interview questions so uh -huh. it was there also one of the questions there that yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right? There are internal tables you can track it. Let's say if you go here, because the problem here is if you want to completely track it, you cannot do that because there are sorry there are a lot of internal uh, like temporary tables that will be created, and those temporary tables will contain that data. Okay, so <clears throat> but up to some level of matching, you can do track it. You can see here match column, match path, match rule set. So this is only uh, for your, what you can say static. I mean, these all things that you see here, match rules and match rule date. This is all. These are all static information. Okay. If you want to view dynamic information, then you would have to query that in the. Uh, you'd have to check that in the logs. Okay, and see which are the tables that are accessed and created, and then you can check that table. What is job metric table? Uh, so job metric table will have the different. Job metric will table will contain only the job ID that will, that will uh, that you are going to start. Does it tell like how many times that that job metrics? Uh, yeah, how many times you but you how many time you ran a particular job that you can get it here. For example, if you check this, how many times you have run one particular job? All those information you can get it here, but the details internal on internal cycles you cannot get it. No, no internal cycles you cannot get it. okay this is very simple information like this is a row ID job this is the metric type and this information is not enough what you have to do is you have to join it with another table 
job control table i think to get the total job job control will have only the current job status okay i think job control job group job metric type okay so again for this information you have to access other temporary tables i think jo- no no i what i'm saying is you join this table with job control table to find out the uh, find out more information of this metric value and all that you understood what i'm saying because yeah. this metric type code this code is meaningless to you right 11 2 yeah. and this is meaningless what you do is you join it with this table if you join it with this table okay you join with this table <clears throat> this data you join it and then you can get the run status and all that here also you can get the run status the description let me short it on uh, for example the contact you can see this let's not deviate from this button so we just continue okay fine yeah okay. i got that so we'll talk about it later yeah. okay now let's move back so one one question one question here uh huh yeah based on our configuration means the job will decide how many internal cycle would be there right correct uh, but yes. i just want to know that uh, suppose based on my conf- configuration i know there would be 10 cycle internal cycle correct how the job will behave if my 50% of the processing is done and afterwards the job is failed i mean how it will uh, you are asking the does it mean it will fail everything or it would be like partial processing is done and then how does it work yeah there's no concept of recovery strategy here i think you're talking about recovery strategy that you have in power center so there is no concept of recovery strategy here everything will start from beginning sorry everything is start start from beginning that you have in power center right restart workflow from task and you have recovery workflow mm-hmm. from task so here there is no concept of recovery from task okay it's only restart so here it means either it's a 0% or 100% nothing in between yeah, that's correct because the thing here is here you do not have control over this number of rows per match job cycle but i've also worked in siebel okay in siebel you do have complete control over this batch cycles so there it's recoverable for example if you ran 30% and 70% is left then that's recoverable but here it's it's that's not the case Okay, here you have to run it again from the beginning. Okay. okay. And uh, <clears throat> accept all unmatched rows as unique. Okay, this so this is yes or no. What it will mean is, let's say, okay, where is that example? This is gone. This 10k are new, and uh, 3k are sorry, 10k are the total records, and this is for auto merge, let's say, and uh, 4k is manual merge. and uh, 3k are new records okay so for this 3k are new record it means if you select this option as yes then automatically they will be uh, they will be taken as new records okay but if you select this option as no then what will happen is their status will never change to 1 it will remain as 2 what you have to do is you have to run a separate job for example this job you have to run this job manually to make to change the status of these records from 2 to 1 so in production always make sure that this is yes in production always make sure that this is yes okay and this is not no it's quite simple in development if you accept all accept accept all unmatched rows as unique but in development you might want to make it no because uh Uh, before you directly merge and do that thing maybe you want to do a double check on that and all this so in development you might want to make it no but in production or sit you would always make it yes and fuzzy match strategy is nothing but the matching strategy on the entire table if you make it as fuzzy then you can use both fuzzy and entire and if you make it exact then you can only use exact for example let's see if you make the strategy as fuzzy 
then you can use both fuzzy and exact columns I mean and exact matching but if you make, make the strategy as exact then you cannot use any fuzzy logic here you can use you can only fuzzy uh, sorry only exact you cannot configure any fuzzy rules here so the strategy here is I told you earlier also for parent you should always go with fuzzy and for children you do not need to choose fuzzy okay you can do that using exact okay so because see whenever an exact is needed and you are choosing a fuzzy you are wasting your time because fuzzy will take lot of time to run you understand right if you make it fuzzy then there are a lot of processes it will take long time to run so whenever you do not want fuzzy always choose exact and uh, the fuzzy population okay here it is demo but in your live project it will contain the population file for example uh, if your uh, client is a uh, German client okay I'll remove all this if the client is let's say German client then you will have German file German population file population file okay so if your client is a French client then you will have a French German French population file so that's quite simple now how this population file what is the importance of this population file and how this will influence your matching Kalyan will stop the class within very short moment okay because I think you are already getting late we'll just finish this and we'll stop the class okay so no, no problem uh, because I want to complete this otherwise you will uh, forget this see fuzzy matching this is a strategy that is let's say sir sir Sunil and Sunil and there is Sriman Sunil and Sunil see sir is a title commonly used in UK and Sriman is a title commonly used in India so if you use an UK population files here then it can easily identify this pattern but if you use an India population file here then it will say that these two are different customers similarly if you use an UK population file here it will say that these two are different customers and if you use the, use the right population file that is uh, India here then it will easily identify that these two are same customers so this that is why this population file this is called as population file population file and the uh, file will be like this for example for Dutch clients it will be like this and dot ysp it will be around 10 mb file okay you need to request this file from informatica not you I mean the administrator needs to request this population file from informatica okay the informatica provides around 100 different types of file for 100 countries so based on which country if you need, you want you can request this population file your administrator and then he will configure that once he configures this then you can easily click on this it will all, all, all show you Netherlands and you can select that and let's say if you are this uh, fuzzy population population this is very important okay if you do not if you select a wrong file yeah the name of the file is dot ysp file okay and uh, uh, Sunil yeah Deepak uh, okay you mentioned it about this file okay uh, so means I, I would like to know if uh, this this works fine if it's a Netherlands okay but if I want to maintain uh, you know uh, my MDM layer for across multiple countries then how we are going yeah, to for across it? multiple countries there are two options either you use international you use international dot ysp you request this file from informatic and you use it otherwise you can what you can do is let's your let's say your uh, population your client business is over France and Germany mm -hmm. only then what you do is you you inform the same thing to informatica what they will do is they will they will create a population file using these two population file they'll merge these two population file and they will create a combined population file and they'll give that to you you can use that 
Okay, otherwise and you can use. Inform... Ah, sorry. And how does the Informatica will understand that uh, it has to use the population file? I mean, I understand it is a merged file, but how? No, no, they don't like a simple uh, adding this and this. They will do it through the tool. You understand, okay. right? They will do so it through the tool. Yes, it's a requirement. You raise a ticket with Informatica. Yeah. And doing the population between these two countries. So Correct. So create a population file for these two countries. Correct, then yeah. Then you open a okay. ticket file. So Correct. Then provide you them. You have to open a ticket to request the file. When you request this population file, just mention on based on which which countries you need. Okay, so based on that, they'll uh, give you population file. And if it's like four or five countries, better to use international. But problem with international is there are some patterns that are that will not be identified. Okay, for example, local Chinese patterns will not be identified in international. You have to use a Chinese file. If your population is Chinese, better to use Chinese rather than international. International is more generic. Okay, and uh, Sunil, you have given one example. I understand you mentioned that uh, Sri Sunil and then Sri Man Sunil. But this is the one example. What can can you give few more other example means other than this? See, other example is example. the local population. For example, see Munich. Munich. Munich is known in the world as Munich. Okay, but in Germany they also call this as Munchen something. You understand, right? In Germany, they call this as Munchen. So this is a local pattern. If you use German population files, then it can easily identify this. Okay, for and also example is like say for uh, in when I worked in the Netherlands uh, Dutch based project, the they they do not say like private limited. I forgot, but there is some other convention. For example, uh, for some countries, the names, the company names will be different, and for uh, the country convention is different. So all the type of local patterns that can that are possible patterns, all these patterns will be recognized using this population file. It could be literally anything uh, based on either personal names or company names or country names. Okay, anything. Um, I'm, I'm, th I mean, just I'm thinking from you know interview point of view that uh, the question may come. What yeah, yeah, question may come. If you are matching the addresses, if you are matching the addresses, then that's what I told you, right? Munich, Munchen, okay, Munich, Munchen, and uh, for example, it, even India has many three, four types of names, okay, like India, Bharat, and all that. So there are even states, okay, even states there are many names, okay. So, you see, like for example, internationally, Orissa, they call Orissa. So in India, they call like Odisha, right? Correct, yeah. So that is all another example. So that is nothing but local patterns identification. All you can imagine everything, okay? There is, I mean, state, country, city, names, and all all these types of things, okay? All these type of things are included here. Okay, and uh, whether this population file is uh, customized, you cannot. We can customize it. You cannot read this file. Okay, this is dot .ysp. This is only uh, Informatica will do it. But I, I am not sure. I have not done this. But Informatica, I think they do provide a tool to if you want to edit this. But there's a big headache if you want to do that. Better to, I mean, leave it to Informatica. But I've heard that you can you, customize it. I mean, Informatica does provide a tool, something at, at special request. Okay. Because I'm not sure whatever the file, uh, population file they are providing based on country, will that uh, sufficient or not? So yeah, I think that's what even you can add your thing also. You, you, you can also manually change it. Okay, you can contact Informatica. They'll tell you, I mean, they'll provide you the tool and everything. They, you can do that. Okay, okay, okay. Then uh, see this parameter. I'll tell you. And first, dynamic match analysis threshold is zero. Okay, this means if I put this as thousand, and okay, if the number of match pairs exceed this value, then your job will fail. So this puts a restriction to the total number of match pairs that can be generated. Okay, the total number of match pairs that can be generated. This is the parameter that decides it. So always make it yeah, zero. You do not. You never enable this. This you in production. This is always zero. But in development, let's say if you want to, uh, if you if you are not sure 
that uh, how many match pairs will be created it is also possible that let's say uh, 5 million match pairs are created then this will run for four days okay so let's say you do not know how many match pairs will be created so and you are doing some testing what you do is you put a restriction here in those cases only in production you do not do it so production you put zero means then it won't do any like uh Otherwise, you can also put, but a high value you can put, like ten thousand, one lakh or something. Zero means disabled. Okay, you do. Zero means disabled. Okay. Zero means disabled. And any other value, if you are putting, if it touches this value, then your job will fail. So dynamic match analysis is nothing but number of match pairs. Restricting the number of match pair to a certain custom level. A certain custom level. This is the custom level. If you want, if it's more than this, then the job will fail. Okay, and these two options are not important, but I'll just tell you, you'll never use these two option. This option is like match only the previous row ID objects. For example, uh, if you have this record 1001, 1002, 1003, 3, 3 and 1004. So when this will be considered, this will only match with C match only previous row IDs for example this when it's creating a match pair it will only match with these two records it will not match with this record you understand right I mean it's based on a linear order of the row ID underscore object so uh, only the less row ID underscore object will be matched with each other what it is doing is I'll tell you what it does is it simply it will restrict the number of match pairs if you use this option so it's not needed do not go for this but the only place where you might need this is when you are running deduplication on the full table so if you are tokenizing the full table then if you choose this option then that will increase the performance okay and this is also the same thing if you use this option then only you can use this option and this will restrict the match to only once for example this matches with this then the matching will stop there okay it will not for example this 1001 and 1002 and you have 1001 and 1003 so if this results in a match then it will not execute this but do not concentrate on this option this is uh, I mean just waste options okay so go through these properties like once again after you uh, in the documentation also go through these properties try to understand this because in interviews they'll ask you Okay, and tomorrow we'll start with path, match, columns, and all that. Okay. So, uh, Sunil, in which document we will get all this? I mean, all you'll get in the, ad the admin, admin document, admin guide. Admin document. Okay. Yeah, and if you do not get something in the admin guide, then you'll get it in the configuration guide. This okay. is a configuration guide. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Then we'll finish it for today. And. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Sunil, I will call you tomorrow. At, sorry, tonight around 8:39. Your time is that okay? Yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah, how much? Sorry. How much time you said? Like, I said like around 8:39, maybe like 30 minutes. 8:30 evening. 8:30 evening. My my evening, right? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay, fine. Then Deepak will dis will discuss. Stay on the call. You wanted to discuss something? Yeah. Once. Uh, Okay, guys. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye, Kanya. Bye, Kanya. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, they have dropped off the book. Yeah, tell me what is your doubt? Yeah. Uh, Sunil, do you have a time or you have any work? No, no, tell Otherwise, me. Otherwise, we can't discuss. Yeah, tell okay. me. Uh, Sun Sunil, I just want to discuss on few points and I, I want to get your input. Okay. Uh, okay. See, I, as I mentioned, right, that I'm going for this training because I'm looking for a job change in Kolkata. And Kolkata, in Kolkata, there is, you know, uh, always a good opportunity for MDM. See, recently there is be a job opening for IBM in Kolkata. Okay, I just got the requirement a few days back. Yeah. So, uh, I, I know I have to work on it. I mean, it's still, it's I'm very beginning state. So, that will take a few more months to cover it up. Okay. But right. that's an objective. 
that's an objective for me okay and that's the reason I joined this but I know that I'm, I'm attending this classes and doing all I am understanding the concept that's a good part but the one thing which I am missing is that I'm not doing a hands-on okay. okay so the, yeah so that's a, and there is a reason currently I'm completely occupied with my work I mean you know 14 hours 15 hours in office and then coming so that's why it's become a difficult but again I, I don't want to use it as excuse I have to do means I have to do okay so okay. Sunil I just want to understand see uh, the reason I'm asking because I have to plan and then execute in the similar way okay I want to show this as a I I'm sure I need to learn it but if I want to show it uh, my experience as a two to three years in Informatica MDM okay mm -hmm. So, okay. I understand that Informatica 10 version has come recently, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, when it has come? Uh, any idea? In uh, 2014. 2014. Yeah, November 2014. Yeah. yeah, so if I have to say that I have worked on two you years or three say, years. In yeah, you have to say you are currently working with 971, okay? And the, the other version, you can say you have worked with the 951. 951 okay but again there is a uh, lots of difference right? then you can say uh, you can see what you do is you say see there is a difference between uh, before 971 and after 971 so what you say is like uh, I have worked on 971 and currently they migrated it to 10 okay so means again I have to know few things right because for example yesterday you were saying that if I want to truncate a table uh, all the table so initially there was a concept of package correct correct uh, yeah but uh, now we can only do through a SIF so those are the differences right yeah yeah differences are there see if you that's what right. differences are there in older version and newer version whenever I'm saying just note it down okay what are the differences otherwise we'll discuss in one class uh, what are the differences between older and newer versions yeah so that would be great I mean you know uh, maybe not now later once I uh, once I am I mean we are done with this training and we are at least at a level then we can discuss this point yeah, yeah. What do sure. you suggest? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. You concentrate on the training now, then you prepare for interviews after that later. Okay. Okay. So uh, during that time, Sunil, uh, you will be able to provide your input, right? I mean, just want to check. Yeah, yeah, I can provide. That would be fine for you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And one more thing, Sunil, uh, regarding this uh, inst uh, means how to use this toad for and all those I means what configuration I have to do toad to actually I'm getting some uh, yeah I'm getting some uh, viral problems with toad so toad is not working you use enterprise manager to access it uh, the whatever the URL you have sent for the yeah, correct correct uh, or yeah use the enterprise okay. enterprise manager okay Okay, but, but but there are the challenges I cannot see the table and all those things. Right? You can see everything. For everything see. I have to write a query and get the result. Ah, okay, okay. You cannot use it like told, but you can uh, execute queries. There I can only execute the queries, but there may be... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Too. Uh, Actually, I'm trying to enable that, but that's not working, so I am trying other ways to configure it. Okay, so the only option for us, this enterprise edition. Correct, correct. Enterprise manager. Okay, Sunil. Okay. Okay, Sunil. I just wanted to discuss on these pointers. So, you know, I will plan for it. I know currently I'm occupied with my work, but hopefully in few days I will be free and I will okay, okay. start so hands on. You, you are, you are Bengali, right? Yeah, 